Hi, Anya here. Today I'm going to show you animal locomotive technique called SAPO. SAPO is a great mobility warm-up, strengthening the wrists and shoulders, but also warming up the hips. I use mainly in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Capoeira, but I also like to incorporate this move in my uh, yoga ability classes. Um, it's a great pose, it's a great movement, uh, allowing us to open the hips, strengthen the shoulders and arms. So those of you guys who love playing with arm balances and inversions, that move is pretty cool to teach your body how to eventually be uh, more comfortable with jumping to handstands, picking up to headstands or any other uh, inversions. Whenever you're ready, let's unroll the mat and play. So we're gonna start with the feet wider than hip distance apart. If you feel like this is not uh, feasible for you, you can always fold the blanket and bring underneath your tush or grab the block and also uh, sit on it. Um, if you feel like you need more opening in the psoas in your hip flexor, you can always spin the toes out before we actually start moving. That's gonna give you a little bit more rotation in the hips and it relaxes the hips a little bit more, also allowing a little bit more stretch in the lower back. We're gonna bring the hands behind, but there's few different options you can use. So those of you guys who spend lots of time in front of computer where the shoulders are rolling in, try to bring your hands facing backwards. That's gonna give you more opening in your chest, stretches the collarbones. Those of you guys who wanna still keep the neutral position on the shoulders because there's some sensitivity going, sensitivity going on in there, bring your hands sideways. If you want, you can also actually bring your hands forward, facing towards your hips. That's going to allow for the shoulders to still go back, uh, but make sure you're not going to roll your shoulders forward. If you have any sensitivity with your wrist, make fists with your hands, and make sure the thumb is facing forward, which means the thumb is going to be facing towards your hips, and you're going to be using your knuckles, so that's going to give a little bit of lift and uh, a little bit of leverage for the wrist and the forearms. So as we're here, let's bring the hands behind you. They could be either shoulder distance apart or a little bit wide or whatever feels comfortable for you. Take a nice big inhale, then on the exhale, let's drop the legs to the right. That back knee, the left knee, wants to go a little bit lower. Give it a little more time because you're going to be getting deeper into your hip flexor. So you don't want to go too fast. And then slowly lift and move to the other side. The same thing, right knee gets a little bit slower towards the, uh, towards the mat, towards the ground. I'll lift her up. Now this time you're gonna bring your right knee down, lift your right hip, lift your left hip, squeeze your glutes, and then lower your left knee down, then right hip and left hip. Try to scoop the left hip a little bit, a little bit more forward towards the right knee as the back shoulder is moving back. So you're adding extra stretch in the, into the spinal muscles, into the IT band, the outside of your leg. And then slowly lift the left knee, lift the left hip, right hip, scoop the right knee out. And we're gonna go with the left knee down, lift the hips first, lower the right knee, a little bit of extra stretch. And then hips are going down as the right hip shifts a little more to the left. Right shoulder back, and then let's come back to center. Now, as in the center, let's lift the hips just inch or two off the floor. So this is where that positioning of the hands is very essential because you're gonna be bringing a little more weight into your wrist. Take an inhale in here and then slowly right knee goes down, hips are lifted, left knee goes down, and then hips are sinking down. From here, lift the left knee, hips swing up to center, and let's do the same thing on the other side. Left knee down, hip down, and try to make sure that you squeezing your glutes in here. Then right knee up, hips up, and left knee up. Okay. As we here, guys, you're gonna sink your hips a little bit closer towards your wrist and then lift your hands, circle your wrist, wiggle the fingers a bit so we can warm up and relax those forearms and wrists for what's coming. Let's bring the hands facing forward this time, unless you wanna use the fist with the thumbs forward. Bring your hands closer towards your hips. Bring your feet closer towards your hips as well. 
and then engage the belly muscles in and lift your hips off the floor then shift the hips all the way towards the ankle try to keep your hips still like two three inches above the floor well, let's shift them back towards the wrist. So it's a bit of warm up in the wrist, shoulders, elbows. Also, lots of engagement in the glutes and the lower abdomen. And let's shift back again. Now, this time, guys, as you're shifting your hips forward, you're going to lift your heels and try to stretch your knees a little bit away from the hips. You're not, you can't really stretch the knees, but try to feel like you're elongating your upper thighs, your femur bones. The bones that connect the knee with the hip at the same time you're also using your spinal and the side muscles of the trunk to really get that stretch in the entire body but make sure that your shoulders are not moving back the shoulders are still close towards the trunk let's slowly from here shift the hips back towards the wrist sit down again lift the wrist circle your wrist inside wiggle the fingers shake it off and let's do it again, hands down to the floor, lift your hips. Shift the hips forward, lift the heels up and push the knees forward. See how far you can go, engaging the glutes, make sure that the glutes are actually very active here. And then from the hips are shifting back towards the wrist. From here, we're gonna again come up on the toes. This time, before you start rolling your knees away from the hips, start walking your hands closer towards your feet just as close as you feel it's comfortable. If it makes it easy, come up on the fingertips. That would allow you to go with the knees a little bit lower down. It gives you a bit more stretch and maybe release the knees down to the floor, lifting your hips higher up and add extra stretch, extra back bend, maybe lifting your chest up. Now, those of you guys who are on the fingertips and our hands on the uh, with the hands flat come back on those fingertips or keep the hands down engage your glutes start lifting your hips a little bit higher lift your knees and slowly start motion your hips down towards the wrist leaning your chest forward bringing your hands in front of your feet on the fingertips lean your chest even more feeling that deep stretch in the sides of your torso and then as you're here into deep squat and you feel like you can lower your heels down Open your feet a little bit wider. Maybe spin your toes out to ground your, uh, make, the, uh, make the position a little bit more grounded, a little bit more solid. Let's keep the hands on the fingertips. Let's take a nice big inhale in here. Lean your chest forward and try to squeeze the knees towards the triceps. And then start rooting your hands off the floor, extending the arms. Nice big inhale in here. Lengthen your chest, relax the shoulders. Feel like your belly can stretch a little bit higher up. So is the lower back. Big inhale in here, then on the exhale, let's raise your hands on the fingertips, push back, find a bit of forward bend, and start swinging your hips from side to side, getting the tension from the shins, calves, and maybe even lower back to relax a bit. And then slowly from here, come back into that squat. This time, feel like you can reach the arms a little bit higher up. Nice big inhale in here. Lengthen the torso from the left. Lengthen the torso from the right. Nice big inhale. Your chest forward. Bring your head up on the floor. And start walking your feet back. Coming to down facing dog for a second. We're looking for the deep stretch in the spine. I like down dog with the knees a little bit more bent because I want to ground my heels. I really want to get the stretch in the sides of my torso. And then let's walk your hands all the way back to meet your feet. Nice big inhale in here, start sinking your hips, lean your chest forward. Let's bring the hands down, face up and the fingers spinning towards your feet. Now come up on your toes so the heels are off the floor. And shift the hips to the left, shift the hips to the right. And as you're moving your hips from side to side, as you may be adding a little bit of motion in the shoulders, try to find a little bit of softness, a little bit of suppleness, in your movement. As we're gonna move into sapo, we wanna wanna make sure that we are more fluid. Not the jamming, not contracting, not tightening anything, not chewing the lips, or squeezing the jaw. And let's from here slowly glide the fingers forward. Take a nice big inhale in here and then start shifting your torso forward, bringing your knees towards your wrist. 
So you're going to kind of like a table position with the knees pressing against the wrist. Now slowly start opening your knees wider outside of the wrist and then shift back all the way to that squat. Lift your hands, wiggle the fingers, circle the wrist. And again, let's glide the fingers forward. Try to extend your arms as far forward as feels comfortable to keep that solid uh, squat. Hands pressing flat and again, this time try to bring your knees outside of the wrist. Nice big inhale in here. Keep engaging your belly muscles in and then slowly shift back. Final wiggling of the fingers, circling the wrist before we go to supple. Shake it up. Glide your hands forward. Keep that extension in your torso. Now, the most essential thing about this one is you don't want to lift your hips and jump forward like you would hop into your handstand. It's actually straight line of moving forward. You're redistrib re redistributing your hips from the back forward. You're trying to float your feet outside of your hands and ahead of your fingers. So nice big inhale in here, hips low, hips heavy, and then slowly try to hop your feet outside of your hands. Keep leaning your chest forward and then Finding a little bit of momentum here, pressing in here. Take an inhale, lengthen your chest, your hips back, jumping back, coming back into that squat. Let's do it again. Glide your hands forward, palms flat. Look forward, lean forward, hop forward. Nice big inhale in here. Keep leaning your chest forward. So make sure you're not rounding your back too much, you're not contracting. You're just trying to feel like you're gonna bounce your hips back to the back of the mat and getting into deep squat. Let's try one more time. Glide your hands forward, lean your chest. Now if you have long arms like myself, you definitely have to bend your elbows or make sure the elbow's not going like into chicken wings position. Now they're actually moving backwards. So bend your elbows, lean your chest forward and hop forward. Then you, as soon as you're jumping forward, your arms are straight. You're pretty much almost going like into one of the yogi uh, arm balances called uh, Bhujya Pidasana. Nice big inhale in your okra. And then hop back. Find yourself in deep squat. If you feel like your shins and your hips are getting a bit tired, hands on the fingertips, drop the head down Straighten your legs and come up to full forward bend, maybe clasping your elbows and swinging your torso from side to side. Then let's find your way to seated position. I'll lift your hands again, shake up your wrists. Thank you so much for joining me on this playful journey to one of the animal locomotive techniques. Uh, my next video on the ability, yoga and mobility is going to be incorporating sapo in it. So uh, I hope you're going to join me on the journey again. See you soon. Thank you.